Luke 1 26 it says and in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and the angel came in unto her and said hail thou that art highly favored the Lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and the angel said unto her fear not Mary for thou hast found favor with God and that and behold thou hast conceived I'm sorry and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob and uh, over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end then Mary said unto the angel how shall this be seeing I know not a man and the angel answered and said unto her the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God and behold thy cousin Elizabeth she hath also conceived a son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren for with God nothing shall be impossible and Mary said behold the handmaid of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word and the angel departed from her and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth and Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the testimony of Jesus. Father, we just declare right now, God, open ears, God, unstopped ears, Father. We declare open hearts, God, and we just thank you right now. And we decrease that you might increase, Father. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Th this, in my opinion, is the most important moment in human history. The most important moment in human history was the incarnation of Jesus. Now, some might argue with me. Some may debate me and say, no, I don't believe that, Dan. I believe the most important moment in human history was the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to argue with someone that ha holds that as their truth, but I will submit to you. Had it not been. Yeah. For the incarnation of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there would not have been a life, death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord. So I believe though they both are incredibly important, one trumps the other. Because without one, the other could not exist. Amen. We look to the cross, but it is the conception, the full gestation and the actual birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is critical to who we are and who God has called us to be as his sons and as his daughters. Amen. Had Jesus not been born then salvation would not exist for mankind. Now, now get this. We oftentimes focus on the actual birth of the Lord. But do you know first he had to be conceived? It's interesting because every promise we ever receive from God is always going to come through the vehicle of faith. And what we find here is a 16, roughly 15, 16 year old girl and the weight of salvation is resting on the shoulders of this little girl to have the faith necessary that will allow for the promise of God that had been spoken for thousands of years to come to fruition. 
Now, now, I, I trust, trust me, you'll never have that kind of weight on your shoulders. But let me tell you, what God wants to birth through you is critical as well because somebody's depending on what God has entrusted to you. Am I talking to the right church? This young woman... One day she's at home and we don't know what she was doing. Maybe she was cooking. Maybe she was sewing. We're not quite sure what activity she was engaged in. But the Bible tells us that the angel Gabriel showed up. Now, when Gabriel shows up, he's got something important to say. Yeah. Well, see, some of y'all, well, honestly, some of y'all, some people talk about they get visited by angels all the time. I, I question that. But. When Gabriel shows up, he's got some very important information because he is an archangel. He's got some very important, important information. He shows up and Mary's startled. She's afraid because the splendor, the beauty, the glory, the awe of an angel appears before her. And Gabriel says, don't be afraid. Fear not. And he pronounces a couple of beautiful things to her. He says, you are highly favored. I turn to a neighbor and say, you're highly favored too. And in case they didn't believe you, turn to another neighbor and tell that neighbor, you're highly favored too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The next thing he says to her is, the Lord is with you. Turn to a neighbor and say, the Lord is with you. Just in case you don't trust their witness. Turn to a different neighbor and say, the Lord is with you. Now, now, I don't know if you understand the ramifications of the fact that you're favored and the Lord is with you, but that is some huge news. That's some good news. That's something that we need to stand up and recognize. You are favored and God is with you. Then, then the angel says, and you're blessed. Turn to a neighbor and say, you're blessed. You got the routine already. Go ahead and do it. Yeah, yeah. He says, you're not just favored. You're highly favored. He says, you are blessed and the Lord is with you. One thing I love about Mary is she didn't dispute her status. Mary didn't say, not me. I'm not favored. I'm not blessed. The Lord's not with me. Mary just soaked it all in. Let, let, me, let me tell you, don't dispute your status. Now, I get, I get, you've made some mistakes, you've made some errors, you've done some things, you've fallen, I get all that, but let me tell you, your position trumps your condition. You've been positioned in Christ Jesus, and the Bible says that you are blessed. The Bible says that Jesus Christ has changed the game as it relates to you. You've been made the righteousness of God. Made is past tense. You've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Turn to a neighbor and say, you're righteous. You've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Don't dispute your status. It's not something that you've earned. It's something that God has made you to be. That's really good news. Am I talking to the right church? I love it because from her childhood, Mary, she's been hearing about this Messiah. From her childhood, she's been hearing all the prophecies and all of the promises, hundreds of them, that concern the Lord Jesus Christ. Her entire life, she's been hearing about this Savior that would come and save his people from their sins, who would come and destroy the works of the devil. She'd been hearing about this her entire life, and now the angel, he appears to her, and he says some things to her that are startling because she now will be informed that she's a part of this process. Could you imagine 
what that moment must have been like. The angel Gabriel himself shows up before you and pronounces some things over you and then gives you some information that was prophesied over 500 years ago. Point number one is this. Make the promises personal. Make the promises personal. Isaiah 714 reveals a passage of scripture that I'm sure Mary was aware of because she was aware of the emergence of the uh, Messiah, Jesus Christ. Isaiah 714 says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, this is powerful stuff because over 500 years prior to this moment, the prophet prophesies that a virgin is going to give birth. God's going to give a sign so that it'll be clear who this Messiah is going to be. It'll be clear to everyone because nothing has ever happened quite like this. This is an anomaly. This is something that has never occurred in the history of mankind. A virgin is going to conceive and give birth to what the scripture says. His name shall be Emmanuel. God with us now 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 get this this passage this scripture this prophecy what it did not say is God is going to cause Mary the virgin to conceive didn't say that it said a virgin shall conceive and so what Mary was going to have to do was see herself in that promise see herself in that prophecy watch it if ever you're going to receive from the promises of God you're going to have to see yourself in that promise or else it's just a general thing that's thrown out there for anyone to receive. You're going to have to see yourself walking in that thing that God has promised. Amen? Amen. Watch it. It's beautiful because this promise was a promise that, was, that belonged to Mary exclusively. This was Mary's promise. Watch this. Nobody else could have fulfilled this. This was Mary's promise that was written about hundreds of years prior to her emergence on the earth. This promise belonged to her because it was the time. It was the exact time that the prophets prophesied. So this is a promise that belonged exclusively to Mary. But watch this. It were possible. It was possible that Mary could have denied the promise by not moving in faith. The Bible says he promises it to her. Amen. And, and, and then as a result of him promising it to her, she begins the process of conceiving the promise. Amen. Watch this. We have to recognize this. The promises, they belong to us. We have promises, literally thousands of promises that belong to us. But we're going to have to see ourselves walking in those promises. If nobody else is going to access this promise, I will access this promise. We have to see it. The, the Bible is chock full of promises for the believers to walk into. But if we don't see ourselves walking into those promises and grab those promises and conceive those promises those promises will not work for us let me prove it to you second peter the first chapter beginning at the third verse it says his divine power has granted us to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them, you may become partakers of the divine nature. Watch it. It says that God is so generous. God is so benevolent. God is so wonderful that he's given us tons and tons of precious promises. Thousands of precious promises in the Bible. 
And the way that we are to use those promises or walk in the power of those promises is by simply agreeing with them and seeing ourselves fulfilling what it is God said that he was going to do in us. I know that there are needs. I know that there are challenges. I know that there are situations that we all face, but God has given us the solution to our problems and to our ills and to the challenges that we face in the word of God. They're called promises. Turn to a neighbor and say, I've got some promises. These promises have been given to us, but we have to make sure that we personalize these promises. Amen. Watch this. Hebrews 4, 1 through 2. Let us therefore fear least a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Watch it. He says that there are promises left to us as believers, just like there were promises left to the Old Testament saints. Now, specifically, he was talking about the children of Israel. They'd been given a promise of entering into the promised land. And for 40 years, they wandered around in the desert and millions of them did not inherit the promises that were designed by God to cause them to tackle the land, to beat the giants and enter into his rest. Millions of them did not receive what God intended for them to have. And the reason they they didn't receive it according to scripture is they did not mix it with faith it means that they didn't take God at his word and step into what God promised them he was going to give to them they didn't mix it with faith meaning they didn't respond when God spoke they simply walked around in circles because they refused to move into what God said belonged to them God told them possess the land but because they refused to step out they did not possess the land millions of them he says be fearful be careful least promises that have been left to you go unfulfilled turn to a neighbor and say mix it with faith in case they didn't hear you you know what to do yeah for your notes don't allow how to stand in your way. Watch it. Hit Mary, the, the angel shows up and the angel says, Mary, you're favored. God is with you. You're highly favored. God is, is with you. You are blessed and you're going to conceive a child and this child is going to be a holy. Jesus will be his name and he's going to sit on the throne of David. The angel shows up and, and he's talking to her about what's going to happen. And Mary says, how can this be? Now, before you criticize her, I would have asked the same question. How can this be? How is this possible? Because I have never known a man. I believe it's there when the promise of the virgin, the promise of the virgin floods her soul. It's there when the promise of the virgin floods her soul. And the angel tells her how it's going to happen is simple. The Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. The Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you. And he's going to cause that holy thing to be conceived. Now, Mary was a young Jewish lady, so she was familiar with the presence of God and the overshadowing power and presence of God. She obviously heard about the God that overshadowed the globe, overshadowed the world that was formed, was without form and void. She'd heard of the Holy Spirit coming and resting over, covering the 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 desert place and causing life to come back into it this this same spirit the angel Gabriel tells her is going to overshadow you and he's going to cause you to produce
produce when it would normally be impossible for you to produce. And I love the overshadowing presence of the Holy Spirit. How about you? For with God, nothing shall be impossible, he tells her. And Mary, she didn't say, well, uh, I hope you're right. She didn't say, well, if it's the Lord's will. What Mary said was, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord. What was she saying? She was saying, "Uh oh, I see myself in that. Behold, I'm the one that Isaiah was talking about. Oh, I see myself in that promise. Behold, I'm the handmaiden. I'm the woman that Isaiah prophesied about. I'm the one that God's designed to conceive, even though she didn't have the proper means of conception. I'm the one that he was talking about. Then she says, be it unto me according to your word. She realized I'm the one to receive the promise. Let it happen just like the Bible said. Let the promises be fulfilled in my life today, she said. And then the angel disappeared. And that moment, the spirit of God overshadowed her. And she conceived according to the word of the Lord. Now, I love the overshadowing presence of God. I, I, I do. But do you know that you've got it better than Mary? You don't know that, huh? Let me prove it to you. John 14, 16 and 17. Jesus speaking. I, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you. Read that forever. Say that. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because. I just power down. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. No, we've got to get this. The overshadowing power of God that hovered over the world that caused the world to be shaped and full and plentiful now lives in you. Watch it. The, The spirit that overshadowed Mary that caused the miraculous conception to happen he overshadowed her that same spirit he now lives in you what you may not know is you have better opportunities than Mary had to fulfill the promises of God that have been left to you why because you don't have the overshadowing presence you have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you I know what the doctor's report may say, but you have the presence of God dwelling on the inside of you. I know what the relationship may look like right now, husband or wife, but you have the indwelling presence of the spirit right now on the inside of you. I know what the financial situation may appear to be right now, but you have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. I understand you may have a wayward son or wayward daughter, but let me tell you, you have promises that have been left to you because you now have the indwelling presence of God living on the inside of you you do know Mary entered into that as well you do know according to scripture that Mary was in the upper room Mary had the overshadowing presence and she experienced the indwelling presence she had the, the presence that overpowered, overshadowed, and the presence that didn't feel. Do you know Mary, in spite of the great thing that God used her to fulfill, she still had to be in the upper room to receive the infilling because the infilling is based on better promises. It's a better covenant. So she did wonderful things in the old covenant, but her promises in the new covenant were so much better. Amen. Go with me real quick to Hebrews, the eighth chapter. I'll prove it to you. Hebrews 8, 6. But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more 
excellent than the old as the covenant. I'm sorry, more excellent than the old as the covenant. He mediates is better since it is enacted on better promises. He's saying you've got a better mediator, you've got a better covenant, and you've got better promises than any Old Testament person in the world. You have a better covenant, a better mediator, and better promises, and you have the indwelling spirit of God living on the inside of you. Amen? Romans 8 says, if the spirit of him that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He shall quicken or cause to be alive your mortal bodies. You have the power of God living inside of you. So there is no reason for you to doubt because God is with you. God is in you and he's causing those things to come to pass in your life. Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit, he's going to fill in the gaps. Don't let how stop you because the Holy Spirit is going to answer the questions. All you have to do is believe. For, for your next point, point number two is this. Protect the conceived promise. Protect the conceived promise. This is important. Luke 2, 6 and 7 says this. And it came to pass while they were there, the days were fulfilled that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him, them in the end. This is beautiful because this is the fulfillment of the promise of God. But, but do you know that Mary didn't go from promise to possession she had process see this occurred this moment occurred nine months before the birth of Jesus she received the promise and nine months later Jesus was born right she received the promise, but then she had the noble task of holding on to the conceived promise so that the conceived promise could be fulfilled in her and through her and the savior that was conceived then could be born. She had to walk through the process just like every promise we ever receive. There's always a process attached to it. Amen. The promise started growing in her immediately but there was no evidence. She conceived immediately. Holy Spirit overshadowed her, and just like the word said, a virgin conceived. But there was no evidence. Jesus was an embryo. See, oftentimes we don't think about this. He went through every experience of mankind. He became so helpless that he became an embryo in the womb of a 15, 16 year old girl to fulfill the promise, to fulfill the covenant, to satisfy the requirements of the commandment. God became an embryo. We have to see it like that, y'all. See, we think about him becoming a baby he became an embryo and he went through the nine month process of development just like every man, woman, boy and girl. You see how glorious God is to submit to the process of mankind. He became an embryo and Mary, a 15 year old girl, had to carry him while he developed she didn't have proof other than the word. Ever have a promise with no proof? Ever have a promise with no proof? See, that's how it works. You get a promise, and the only proof you have is the fact that the promise exists. She received a promise got pregnant and had to walk day by day with no evidence for the first several months. Amen. Amen. Mary had to pick, carry the promise without evidence. Every promise from God has a gestational period. Amen. Typically, depending on the size of the promise, the gestational period is expanded. It's kind of like a rabbit. 
a rabbit will have a baby in like 30 days, 40 days, maybe in 60 days. Anybody know how long the gestation is? About 30, 40 days for a rabbit. They get pregnant and boom, they got babies. Rabbit's a wee thing. But a whale, a whale is almost two years. Pregnant for almost two years. Why? Because of the scale. <laughs> Takes a lot longer for a whale baby to develop than a rabbit. Right? A whale baby comes out looking like a bus. <laughs> so, so watch it. The scale of the promise oftentimes dictates the length of the gestational period. So maybe one of your friends, they've come to the end of their faith and they're experiencing what it is God had for them, they believe in God for. But you're like, what's taking me so long? Well, it may just be the scale or the size of the miracle is larger. So you have to hold on a little while longer because it needs time to develop. It needs time to grow. It needs time to form before you can lay your hands on it, before you can lay your eyes on it. It just takes a little more time in process. Amen. Am I talking to the right church? <clears throat> Turn to a neighbor and say, hold on to your promise. Don't you let it go. Hold on to your promise. Now, now watch this. I'm sure that Mary probably told a couple of people, but the Bible tells us about one person that she told. She went to her fiance, her fiance, and she told him, hey, Joseph, I'm pregnant. Her fiance. Now, now watch this. They didn't do things like some folk do things today. They don't have a baby first and then get married. They get married first and then have a baby. So Mary goes to Joseph and says, Joseph, I know we're not married yet. We're engaged to be married, but I'm pregnant. And it's God's baby. If, if I'm like Joe, <laughs> I'd have been like, how dare you blame God? <laughs> Joseph didn't believe her. We know he didn't believe her. Now, Mary had a private visitation from Gabriel the angel. He showed up and gave her the word of the Lord. It was a powerful moment for her, but... When she stepped outside that room, she was pregnant and nobody was going to believe her. Watch it. Joseph was a good man, though. Joseph said, look here, we threw. That's what he said. He did. He said, we threw. But I'm not going to expose you. I'm going to put you away privately and not make this a public spectacle. Joe loved her and he was a good brother. I'm not going to expose you and put you to public ridicule and shame. I'll put you away privately. We know Joe didn't believe her because the Bible tells us the angel had to come to him. He needed angelic proof. <laughs> Your prophecy ain't going to mean nothing to me. You can send all the prophets you want to to Joe. And Joe was like, nope, don't believe it. The angel had to come. The magnitude of this moment was so vast that the angel had to show up and tell Joseph, you're right. But prior to this moment, the angel showing up and talking to Joe, Mary, she took a little trip. She took a little trip. The Bible tells us she went to Judah. Judah just, you know, happens to mean praise. She went to Judah. And in Judah was her cousin Elizabeth. Now, watch this. In the word that the angel gave to Mary, the angel gave her a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. 
He told her, Elizabeth, the one they said was barren, she's pregnant. She's about six months along. She's pregnant. Now, he didn't tell her what to do with that. He just told her the information because he knew she would need it. I can imagine she told Joe. Joe didn't believe her. I can imagine she went to her mother and her father. And her mother was like, girl, are you out of your mind? She went to her friends, and her friends couldn't believe it. And then the word of the Lord, the word of knowledge that the angel gave her came back to her. The, Bible, the angel told me Elizabeth is pregnant, and I know that's a miracle because her whole life she could never conceive. Her whole life she's been barren. She's not had a child. I know Elizabeth may be the person I need to go to because the angel gave me instructions in the word that he gave me to go and see Elizabeth. So she went to Judah, and she went to go see Elizabeth. This wasn't easy. This is a 30-mile, 40-mile trip. This wasn't easy. 30-mile, 40-mile trip. She made a sacrifice to go see Elizabeth. But when she got to Elizabeth, she began to talk to Elizabeth about what was going on. She saluted Elizabeth, the Bible says. And when she saluted the Elizabeth, the Holy Ghost came on Elizabeth. And Elizabeth began to prophesy. She gave a word of knowledge. This is what Mary needed to hear. She prophesied and said, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord. She prophesied to her and let her know this thing that the Lord is doing. It is of the Lord. The baby began to leap. Elizabeth baby began to leap on the inside of her because of the spirit of prophecy that rested on her because Mary needed confirmation. Mary needed somebody that could walk with her. Mary needed somebody that could agree with her. She needed somebody that wouldn't look at her crazy with scorn. Somebody that would say, I know this is God and I'm going to be with you, walking with you through this season because this is of the Lord. Sometimes you just need somebody who can agree with you. You can't tell everybody everything. Let me say it again. You can't tell everybody everything. You have to find those people that are yoked together with you. Those folk that God has sent that he's predestined for you to walk with. Because sometimes everybody's not going to believe what God has placed in your spirit. But somebody will because God will confirm his word with you through somebody else so that you can be supported through the process. Amen. Elizabeth is six months and some commentators, some, some guys say this. They say that the reason why this moment was so significant for Elizabeth, the baby jumping in her belly, was because to this point, the baby had moved. She was pregnant, but to this point, they believe the baby had moved. And so not only was this a confirmation for Mary, but it was a confirmation for Elizabeth that this was something that God was continuing to do on the inside of her. They became confirmation and affirmation for each other. And watch this. The Bible says that Mary stayed for three months with her. Why is that? Because she was going to stay with her until her promise was fulfilled. Remember, she got to Elizabeth at six months. When she got there, she was six months. The Bible says she stayed there for three months. She stayed there to watch the fulfillment of the promises that God had given to Elizabeth. Why? Because that was going to strengthen her faith. If God could do it for her, he could do it for me also. If God could make this thing good for her, he could make this thing good for me also. She held on to her promise. She was encouraged by her cousin Elizabeth. Turn to a neighbor and say, find Elizabeth. You know the road. You know what I'm going to ask you to do next. Turn to a neighbor and tell them, find Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because Elizabeth is critical to the gestation of the promise that God has given to you. You need to find someone that can walk with you while you wait on the promises of God. While you go through the process, you need an Elizabeth who will be with you to help you to hold on to what it is God has called you to Watch this, people of God. Watch this. I believe as a church, we're in a season where we're learning more and more about walking by faith. Now, get this. I'm not talking about faith for the, the simple reason of you getting what you want. I'm just not talking about that kind of faith. I'm talking about the kind of faith that puts demands on the kingdom of God so that the, the realities of the kingdom can be birthed into the earth. Why? Because every promise of God, it comes through and is birthed through one of God's people. The promises, they're given to and birthed through one of God's people. Just like Mary was a conduit for the purpose of God to come to pass, God used the promise to impregnate Mary, and Mary was the conduit through which the kingdom came. 
Understand this. God's going to give us promises, not so that we can lavish ourselves with all kinds of good things, but so that the kingdom of God can be revealed and manifest in us and through us. That's how the kingdom comes to earth. It's through the people of God. You'll see that throughout scripture. That's why he says without faith, it is impossible to please him. So get this. I'm not talking about a name and claim it kind of faith. I'm talking about the kind of faith where we see what God is doing. We partner with what God is doing. And as a result of us partnering with what God is, with what God is doing, then we see the kingdom of God manifest and materialize through us as a church. Am I talking to the right church? There are thousands of people in our region that need to be saved. There are thousands of people that need to be reached. There are thousands of people that need to come into relationship with Jesus Christ so that salvation can rule and reign in their homes. There are people who have eternity at stake all around us. And the reason we're going to engage our faith is so that those people can come to know Jesus. There's no higher purpose for being a, a, a born again believer. No higher purpose. And so get it. God is going to give you promises. He's given you promises. It's your task now to go into the word, search out those promises and begin to hold on to those promises so that the kingdom of God can come through you. Amen. Amen. For your notes real quick. You are a kingdom carrier. You are a kingdom carrier. Just like seeds need soil a seed will be full of potential for hundreds of years hundreds of years there'll be a seed that will have potential locked on the inside of it until that seed is sown into soil the potential that's locked inside of that seed will never materialize it doesn't matter what other kind of environment you set it on. If it's not plugged into soil, that seed's potential will not be unlocked. That's why God compares his word to seeds. Because seeds need soil. The word needs a fertile heart of faith to grow in to unlock the potential of the word that God has promised. Am I talking to the right church right now? And so as people of God, let's recognize our responsibility as carriers or conduits of the kingdom of God and begin to engage in the word of God for the purpose of allowing the kingdom of God to be birthed through us, in us, and through us. Amen? Amen. Promise, process, possession. Promise, process, possession say it with me promise process possession one more time promise process possession turn to a neighbor and say you hold on to your promise don't you let it go turn to a different neighbor hold on to your promise don't you let it go mary had to hold on to her promise for nine months about five of those months were without evidence Nothing showing. When do women, when do ladies start showing? About five, about five, sometimes four. It varies. So she had to hold on to her promise at least around four months before she had anything to ever indicate what was happening on the inside of her. People of God, I know you may not be showing yet. Yeah. I know it may not be showing yet, but there's a work happening down on the inside of you. I know it may not be manifest yet, but there are some things happening down on the inside of you. I know it maybe it's taking longer than you anticipated it would, but there are some things happening on the inside of you. Hold on to your faith and do not let it go. Amen. Father, we thank you for this moment in your presence. We thank you, God, that you're so good, that you're so wonderful.